Hey nerds, what's up? Today's video is going to be the December wrap up. So let's get right on into it. First off, in December, I finished The Cruel Prince by Holly Black. I gave this book a four out of five stars. I've been reading, I picked this up in order to finish the 2019 Goodreads Awards challenge that I gave myself, which in these challenges, I've decided that if there's a series and I haven't read any of the series, I'm just going to read the first book in the series rather than like trying to catch up. How many times can I say series in one sentence? I read that for this. I read this for that. Whatever. And I gave it a four out of five stars. Um, a lot of people are obsessed with this series, so you probably know what it's about. But just in case, it's about a girl named Jude and her and her twin when they were young their parents were, they're humans, and their parents were killed by a fairy, and then the fairy brought them back to fairyland, fairy, the land of fae. He did that because their half-sister was his daughter as well, who was taken by the mom to go to the fairy, to go to the human world. Wow. Okay. So Jude is growing up in fairy, and she really wants to be a knight, but she's a human, which is looked down upon. She's like, second class citizen. Not very many people do mess with her just because she is the daughter, adopted daughter of somebody who is very like renowned in the world. Um, but even then she wants like her own power. So this book is about her making a bargain in order to gain some power. And then it goes on from there. There's also a cruel prince, hence the name, named uh, Cardin. And everyone is really obsessed with Jude and Cardin, like the supposed romance between them, and I do not understand. I don't understand because I don't feel like it even exists. Like, what's happening? Why? Hmm? Where are you? What are you? What book are you reading? Because this book didn't have that. I don't understand. Is this a fanfic thing? Like, what? <laughs> but that's okay. So I'm still, you'll see this book come back in a second because I also read the Wicked King later in the month, um, which I might as well just talk about now. So then I read The Wicked King, which is the sequel to this. Obviously, I won't give much away, but the story continues. I gave that book a four out of five stars as well. And again, like two books in, I just don't understand how, how did we all get to the point where everyone's obsessed with Jude and Cardin? Because like, it's so minimal. Like, how is that the thing that we're all stuck on? I don't know. It, I'm not saying that you can't love Jude and Cardin. I'm just saying I don't get it. So, I am liking this series. I plan on reading Queen of Nothing sometime in 2020 to finish up with my 2020 Goodreads challenge um, along in that book club that I've been mentioning in pretty much every video to read the 2020 Goodreads winners. But yeah, I don't really understand that part but I do enjoy this book. I also read Five Feet Apart by Rachel Limpicott in December. I gave this book I think I gave it a three. A three out of five stars. I think I gave it a higher star at the time but it's a three. This book is about a girl with CF or cystic fibrosis um, in the hospital and while she's in the hospital she goes a lot because of CF. Um, she meets this boy named Will who also has CF and there's a romance there which they talk about in the book too that people with CF um, are dangerous to each other because of the way the lungs and the bacteria work and it's just it's dangerous but in general they can kind of you know they can date or whatever their disease is not contagious. It felt a little bit done before it felt a lot like the fault in our stars um, and it didn't feel like with how many years have passed since the fault in our stars was made that this you know transcended anything or made it any better it was just another book about teenagers who are sick and have a romance which like I don't know and then I also in the in the vlog that I had this book in I did get some message some comments saying that the CF rep isn't even necessarily great so it's like I don't know it was just it was just fine like I read it it was it was cute but it didn't like blow my mind or anything I also read a Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J. Mass. I give this book a five out of five stars. This is a reread for me. I was reading it with Sierra and Chelsea from Chelsea Dolling Reads, and I'm a fan. I'm a fan. I'm a fan. I hate Tamlin. Reese is great. I am so excited to keep going. I also did end up 
um, hopping into the read-along that these lovely humans are doing, and I don't remember the name of the read-along, but they're doing a read-along that just so happens to match with the time that I picked this book up, so it's perfect timing, so I did listen to most of their live show on it, and I'm excited. I'm planning on reading A Court of Missing Fury this coming month, which is your sneak peek for the January TBR that's coming right after this. I love it. I love it. I love it. I'm obsessed. I also read Fairest by Marissa Meyer. This is the last novella for the Lunar Chronicles series for me to read, so I have officially completed the series, and I think I read the whole thing in 2020, but I might be wrong. So this one is like technically three and a half in between the third and the fourth, which is the final book, and it follows Queen Lavana, which is our main villain. So it's a prequel to the story and gives us a lot of Queen Lavana. I personally really enjoyed it. I like the Lunar Chronicles a lot. I think I've given all of the books four and a half stars. For me, they are, I did read them later than I should have. Like, I'm very surprised that I waited this long. Honestly, if I had read these when they were coming out, I think I'd love them a lot more just because the reason, the only reason that I really don't give them a full five is just because they feel like they were made in... Like, when was this printed? 2015. Yeah, it feels like a 2014-2015 series, which is not to say that that means it's bad. It just it just means that it's uh, overdone at this point, which is fine because this was made at that time. You know what I'm trying to say? Do you get what I'm saying? It's the problem with not reading the new releases when they're out because then you accidentally read too many books that feel very similar. But anyways, I love this series. I really do. And this one was really just a fun, a fun prequel to kind of get, get inside Queen Lavana's head a little bit because she's kind of a creepy villain. Next up, I read Horrid by Katrina Leno. This is my third, I think, Katrina Leno book. It was good. I gave it a four, four and a half stars. It wasn't perfect because I did not like the way it ended, but this follows a girl named Magpie? Jane. Why did I? Magpie's the other book by Katrina Leno. Um, Jane. So Jane's dad dies before the beginning of this book and her mother Ruth Ellen takes her from California all the way to Maine I think and they go and live in Ruth Ellen's childhood home um, and Ruth Ellen clearly is like not excited to be living there. There is some history that she's not stating and Jane just like is a little bit nervous about it. She makes a few friends at the school um, and everyone is really freaked out by the house that Ruth Ellen grew up in. They are like, oh, you live there and it's like haunted supposedly. And Jane starts experiencing some paranormal stuff. This book is a paranormal thriller, I think would be the word. I don't think it's a horror. I think it's a thriller. Um, it was very creepy and I could not read it at night for the most part. I read it once at night and then ended up having nightmares. So I was scared. I don't read a lot of horror or thrill. Like I do read thrillers but not paranormal thrillers usually. So with a grain of salt like maybe it wouldn't be freaky to you if you read that sort of stuff all the time. But if you're like me and don't read it a lot you might be freaked out. I liked it but I did not like the way it ended. It was just it didn't feel like the end of a book. It felt like we stopped like three chapters before the end of the book. Which is a very normal thing for authors to choose to do. It's like it is a writing style and I just I don't like it. <laughs> so four, 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 four and a half stars. I also read this adorable little novella called Wrapped Up in You by Talia Hibbert. This is only available on Kobo and you can get it for free if you download the Kobo app or if you have a Kobo. So I did that because Chelsea from Chelsea Dolly Reads let us all know that in her very first vlog since she's been gone Yay, Chelsea's back. I read it on her recommendation and it was really cute. It's my first Talia Hibbert. Um, I do have a few Talia Hibberts on my TBR, but it's romance and yeah, romance is not the first thing that I ever really pull towards. Um, the Day After Christmas, this was a cute little story. It's about this woman who has re relatively recently gotten divorced. She has, like, she feels like she has gotten kind of as much past it as like she can and she's healing and stuff and she's going home for Christmas and her childhood best friend of her and her twin brother um, is also coming home for Christmas 
and he is like so this takes place in England um, they're both British or they're all British he's an actor in America and he's kind of like like a superhero you know always always plays the same part kind of like um, Chelsea said this too is like kind of like a Chris Evans but British is what I also saw uh, and so he's coming home for Christmas and you get both of their perspectives and so like she has these feelings for him but she's like doesn't want to ruin the friendship and he has decided to like come home and woo her and it's so cute it's just like a short little snippet of them figuring out how to get together it's so cute I loved it um, I always do have the same issue with most novellas, which is just that they never feel finished or, like, fully rounded out to me, and I think that that's just a me not getting along with a, the style of a novella. I think I don't think it's anything bad to say about the novella, but I only gave it a four out of five stars just because, yeah, it, do, it doesn't feel completely rounded out for me, but I, again, I think that's just a me not liking novella problem. The last book that I have to talk about is The Indig Indigenous People's History of the United States by Roxanne Dunbar Ortiz. This is a book that I did not rate. It's a non-fiction. It's very dry. It's um, basically it goes through the entire history of when Europeans showed up in uh, the Americas and it's all of what happened to the Native Americans. So you get you get the Native American perspective of our history here. Um, which isn't told a lot in our history books that we get in our schools. So I read this and it was a lot of information. It was very intense, just like getting a different perspective. But overall, it was more like reading a textbook. So I don't want to rate it because it's not like it's not like something that you're supposed to necessarily enjoy. It's it's just information. Like I said, very dry, just straight up information. And I do think that like this should be something that is given to us in a history book. Like, it should be a history book with, maybe with the other history books. Like, I think, I think that that would be the, like, if I could decide on the curriculum, that would be how I would do it, is, like, read this chapter of this timeline in U.S. history and read this chapter in U.S. history from this perspective so that you can kind of see all of the sides, I guess, um, and don't, like, pretty picture what U.S colonizers did gross it's nasty don't pretty it anyways so yeah finish that very important um i will be doing a video all about some nonfiction books that i really enjoyed or think you should read coming up soon so you might see this again in another video <laughs> Dun -dun -dun -dun. those are all of the books that i read in december I thoroughly enjoyed myself in December. That's the most amount of books I've read I think I've all year in one month. So very happy with that. Um, and yeah, keep an eye out for like my 2020 review for all of the books as well as my January TBR which will be coming up next. So please hit that like button if you enjoyed and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and want to see more. I also have a bunch of links down below for where we can be friends in other places. And I make videos every Monday and Saturday right now. So I'll see you guys very soon with a new one. Peace out. Bye.